So what's the alternative, I guess? What's the alternative? Well, Nietzsche, interestingly enough, I think, figured out the alternative almost, how long is it now? More than 150 years ago now. It's pretty damn amazing, you know? He was an amazing thinker. Nietzsche knew, for example, and he wrote about this in his notebooks in Will to Power, that the nihilistic doctrines that would emerge in the, con in, in the aftermath of the demolition of the theological and philosophical substructure of the West that he associated with the revelation of the death of God would produce a form of political catastrophe, and he identified it specifically, believe it or not, with communism, and that was back in like 1850, 1860, I can't believe he did it, and that that would kill tens to hundreds of millions of people in the 20th century. Now, Nietzsche also said, well, maybe that wouldn't be too, hard, too high a price to pay if we actually learned something from it, but it isn't obvious that we have, and it's certainly not obvious that the postmodernists that, that uh, let's say, infest the modern universities have been willing to learn anything at all from 20th century history, not least the lesson that the egalitarian and equal, equity-oriented doctrines that they're attempting to foist upon young people in, in, in this cult-like educational manner are anything but murderous. Anyways, here's what Nietzsche said. He could really turn a phrase, man. For the man be delivered from revenge, that is for me the bridge to the highest hope, and a rainbow after long storms. The tarantulas, of course, would have it otherwise. Quote, what justice means to us is precisely that the world will be filled with the storms of our revenge. End quote. Thus they speak to each other. We shall wreak vengeance and abuse on all whose equals we are not. Thus do the tarantula hearts vow. And will to equality shall henceforth be the name for virtue. And against all that has power, we want to raise our clamor. You preachers of equality, the tyrant mania of impotence clamors thus out of you for equality. Your most secret ambition is to be tyrants and shroud themselves, shroud yourselves in words of virtue. Oh, you know, that's a pretty major criticism. And it's one that, to me, actually explains the paradoxical, the perverse paradoxes that sit at the bottom of the otherwise ununderstandable union between the postmodernists and the Marxists. So you lay out the argument again like this. The postmodernists have it that there are no canonical interpretations of the world. I already told you why that's a foolish, a foolish stance in my estimation. But even assuming it's true, then what that would mean is that you don't get to ally yourself with doctrines such as Marxism, but of course the postmodernists do. And so what that means is because you can't come up with a logical explanation for that let's call it unholy union, you have to look elsewhere for an explanation. But you can't look to compassion itself, which is the explanation that's offered, because the doctrines that are being promoted to be implemented in the service of mankind have demonstrated themselves, as few other doctrines ever have, as murderous and tyrannical beyond belief. So you don't get that. So then what? What's left over? Well, here's another thing that's interesting about the postmodernists. In their world, there's nothing but power, right? Nothing exists but power. And so the landscape for the postmodernists is that the world is a sequence of pyramids of hierarchies of power, all of them equally unjust and unreliable, let's say, because there's an infinite number of interpretations, and all that is establishing the relationship within those hierarchies and between those hierarchies is power. Now, you know, obviously that's a conclusion that is cynical beyond comprehension and reprehensible beyond belief, not least because it's so, it, it reduces a very complex reality to a very simple, simple, single cause. But it also, the thing is, I've been trying to figure out why this emphasis on power above all else. Well, you think, well, the basic claim of, of an infinite number of interpretations is incorrect. There's no logical reason for the relationship between postmodernism and Marxism. There's no logical reason 